counted it on her. <laughs> to stand in this sacred place. And the only reason that I'm here tonight is for one purpose and one reason. His name is Jesus. Amen. If it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be breathing today. Can I say this? Psalm 150 and verse 6, let everything that hath breath. Right there, my friend, you got something to praise him for. You're breathing today because of one man, and his name is Jesus. <laughs> that excites me, amen. <laughs> Woo, getting up this morning looking uh, for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I know folks today is doing it like they was in the day of Noah and uh, not even really thinking about the Lord is coming. Amen. Hey, you better look at the world around you today and all the violence uh, and all the things and wild things that's going on today. The Lord is coming. That's a promise, my friend. That's a promise. Uh, I'm excited about what God done one day in my life. And so I want to pass that on to you this evening. If you open your Bibles to Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, I want to read just a little bit. I want to throw out there, my friend, listen, you don't have to be able to read it, man, cat and dog, uh, to meet the old back home country cornbread fed Holy Ghost, amen? <laughs> There's something about the Holy Ghost of God, amen, that reaches beyond any drug or anything or any kind of joy you could ever have on this side. The Holy Ghost of God, my friend, reaches down to mankind where he's at. You know what he says? <laughs> Just the way you are. He said, I love you. <laughs> Hey, that old sinner out there today that had to pop a pill this morning to get up. Jesus said, I love you. <laughs> Woo, I'm glad it ain't you. Amen. I'm glad I'm peculiar and a little different. You ought to be. <laughs> if you've met Jesus, my friend, you ought to be peculiar people tonight. Amen. Well, the Bible says here in, uh, in, uh, in Mark chapter 2, he says, And again he entered into the premium after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Can I say, uh, glory to God that he's in the house tonight. Amen. And then he went on to say, and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room uh, to receive them, no, not as much as about the door. And he preached uh, the word of him. <laughs> he preached the word of God. My friend, listen, if you've been born again, you ought to be able to go back to the word of God. Uh, somewhere along the way, they reached out uh, and put his arms up around you. By the way, God is his word. That's why I say put his arms around you and draw you to himself. He went on to say this. He says, there's a much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, uh, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him uh, for the press. They uncovered the high, uh, roof of uh, where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lie. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins uh, be forgiven thee. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, God just for a few moments, Lord, uh, standing in a secret place hiding behind Calvary, I pray Lord you'll take these old rotten, stinking and lips of clay. Uh, God will anoint them once again, uh, fresh on high. And God, just reach out and do what thee and thee only can do. And we'll be careful to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. Uh, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I was thinking about this man right here. He's a paralyzed man. Uh, uh, can I say to you today uh, that glory to God, a sinner is paralyzed. Uh, I am man it's even got so far back out in the world uh, that he was forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. He is paralyzed. Uh, the world has got a hold of him. And then uh, the duty of God 
God's people and you're what God would have you to be, then I want to take you to something right here. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, that don't make you perfect, my friend, but I want to tell you right there, you cannot quack with the ducks, pluck with the chickens, and fly with the eagles. There's a separation that takes place. But what I want to get at you, Christian friend, hey, my brothers and my sisters, I get to the wayside. It's not for me to stomp them down, run them down. Oh, he ain't saved. Oh, she ain't saved. Uh, who are you? God didn't leave you in charge. You don't save nobody. Uh, the Bible said, brethren, if any of you be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, do what? Restore such a one. Uh, why do you restore uh, that brother and sister in Christ? Uh, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Least I also be tempted. Hey, can I tell you, Peter? Hey, Jesus told Peter, Peter, Satan is out to sift you as wheat. And Peter ain't no different than you and I. You know what he said? Now, oh, Lord, I'll not turn my back on you. I'll go all the way with you. And hey, he said, Peter, uh, before the cock crows three times, you'll deny me. You know the story. He cried, hey, my friend, your cock will crow along the way in your life. And I'm glad with the God. I'm glad, hey, man, hey, that I have some brothers and sisters in Christ uh, the spot of me and the darkness is a come my way, uh, that I can know they're praying, uh, and their prayers is reaching the throne of grace. Hey, I need prayer, amen. I know you do too. They ain't none of us arrived you hit. But this man was paralyzed. And here's a good picture of the church. I'm going to testify in a minute. Here's a good picture of the church. You know what these people done? They went out of their way to get this man to Jesus. They went as far as taking a section off the roof of the house to lower him down in there. Now here's the scripture I want to get at you, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. God, my friend, God, my friend, gave you, you said, well, I ain't no preacher, you don't have to be. Have you been born again. You don't have to be no teacher, but my friend, if you've met uh, uh, this man, Christ Jesus, God give you the ministry of reconciliation. Hey, there's no way. I cannot go where you can go and be you, brother. I will look funny trying to be you. I will look funny. God created you. Matter of fact, the Bible says it this way over in Isaiah. See, even everyone that's called by my name, I have created him for my glory. Hey, my friend, hey, that junkie was created for the glory of God. That alcoholic was created for the glory of God. Amen. Hey, hey, what, who have you tried to reconcile back to Christ lately? Amen. I mean, in your job site. Oh, it's easy in the house of God uh, to hug your neck and say, I love you. Oh, it's good to see you. What about that one out there in the ditch somewhere? My friend that's run down, lies upside down, darkness, uh, smell like something all plumb out something in the middle of nowhere. What about that sinner? When's the last time you told one Jesus Christ? Loves them. I tell you what, Nick, I don't know what kind of gift you receive, but the Bible tells me in 1 Peter 4 10, he says, As every man that excludes none, as every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another of good stewards and the manifold grace of God. Hey, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Someone needs to hear from those lips of clay that God formed your lips from. Not to run them down, not to say there's no hope for them. Somebody has waited uh, for you to say there's a man named Jesus that loves you. Amen. I'll tell you just a little bit about my own life. 
I was paralyzed. I was born that way. The Bible says in Psalm 51, 5, Behold, I was shaped in a dignity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. That's you. That's me. Now let me tell you what your heart is. The Bible says over in Jeremiah 19, 17, 17 not something right through there, it says man's heart, that's you, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's you, my friend. Hey, you don't, you don't, I don't give you, you ain't never done no drugs. You've never drank alcohol. You've been a good old boy. You've been a good old girl. You're a sinner. Hey, man, you know who Jesus loves? Paul said, this is the faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus, not Mamma, not Papa, not Daddy, but Christ Jesus came in this world to save sinners. And guess what you are? A chief. <laughs> That's going to bust some of your bubble. Go over to God. You are a chief sinner. But Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, my friend. There I was, glory to God, on my way, on my way to hell, rotten to the core. And uh, there was about the age of seven, eight, nine years old. I was running off from home. Started out stealing tricycles. Glory to God, every ungodly thing. Why? Because of my deceitful and wicked heart. And while you're right there, I'm going to give the parents a little something. Hey, listen. If you don't discipline your children while they're in the playpen, someone else will discipline for you when they get to the state pen. Hey, man, I'm going to give you some Bible on that. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction, our government don't know good. No, sir, our government's in a mess today because they try to do things they know better than God knows. No, sir. God's guidelines been laid down uh, back from the beginning of time. He says also, he that spareth the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chaseth him be times. My friend, you can either discipline your children now or when they get old enough, they've been knocking you down, taking over the household, telling you what you can and can't do. You said, not my baby. I'm going to tell you there's such thing as tough love. You better love your children and do it the way God said do it or they'll wind up in jail. You'll have heartaches you've never had. They'll wind up in prison. They'll wind up on drugs. They'll wind up out there in that world and you'll be scratching, pulling your hair out, saying, Lord, help me. You know what he's going to tell you? Hey, I told you already in my word what to do about this. Way before this ever happened, and you didn't listen. Hey, go over to God. <laughs> but I was one of them little kids. I was snotty nose. And then about the age of 16 years old, went in about 10 different foster homes. I wouldn't let them tell me what to do. And by the way, let me go ahead and throw this out there. Hey, may be some foster parents in here. But I want to bust your bubble if you're not the right one. If you're there and you're taking them children, I see signs everywhere I go. A foster a child, foster a child. And all oh, that's a good thing. Hey, but my friend, if you're taking them children in, Cause you're too lazy to work, glory to God, and all you want is a check coming in for those children, shame on you. But if you're taking them in because of God provided for you to love that child, bring them to the house of God. Hey, God bless your heart. But that was me. I went out there, and then about the age of 16, I wind up catching a $2 arm. And everything I'm saying tonight, hey, listen, I'm, I'm ashamed of it. I should have got the death penalty a long time ago. They should have killed me. They should have stuck me under prison. But, oh, glory to, glory to God, that one you're giving up on today, can I tell you a scripture, glory to God, that applies to the one you're saying there's no hope for? But God, amen. But God uh, commend his love toward us. Uh, why did he do that? And when did he do that? But God commend his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You said, but I've never done this. You're a sinner. My friend, he, he didn't what you do. Glory to God, you was born into it. And Christ made a way out. Thank God. Amen for that. And then I, so therefore at the age of 16 years old, hey, they ruled me in cars with that $2 arm robbery charge, stuck me over in Los Kenny Jail with them adults, and I got over and run into a sodomite. And I, <coughs> I look at him. 
Hold on now, wait a minute. I'm not throwing, I, I used to try to throw the sign of myself. They're just a sinner, my friend. Glory to God. God loves sinners. He didn't say if she's a junkie, if he's an alcoholic, if he's a Salamite, she's a Salamite. God says sinners. Amen. Amen. Don't throw them out the window. No, sir. You love them just like you'd love anybody else. No, God hates to sin. But I'm going to tell you one thing. There's one God thing. One thing God's never done. He's never said, oops, I made a mistake and I'm going to get out of that. But anyway, he went on, liquor got there in jail. God went and run into Solomite, started winking at me. I thought he had a, uh, an eye problem, a medical problem. And then come to find out, he started smiling at me. And, uh, and I'm not saying this boastfully. Next thing you know, he touched me on my little tail and mm, go over to God, if you're in here today and you're sick and you're looking at children that way, mm, shame on you. Go over to God. I can say a whole lot more, but I'm going to let that go. Mm, meet me outside. Talk to me about it. But anyway, I'm a fighting preacher. I don't have to say that. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness, my friend, you study it, is strength under control. Go over to God. You, hey, your flesh is not saved. And that thing right there is capable of doing anything without God's help. No, I know yours ain't you. So some people get so heavenly minded that they're no spiritually good. Hey, man. Hey, but I don't got news for you. It's all level at Calvary, my friend. Hey, but then there I was. God knows came to God wound up catching 99 years. I deserved it. I was guilty. Glory to God. Got 99 years. Went in the Brush Mountain prison over there. Went in those big steel horse. I'm thinking, Lord, how much I, I messed my life up big time. I got in there and I'm going to tell you the first thing I turned to, drugs. I've shot more dope than Ben King got pork and beans. They've been in business 125 years. I've shot it. I've smoked it. I've altered my mind in every way you possibly could. And I was trying to find a little peace in the darkness of my life that I caused myself. And there I was, I'd shoot it, I'd smoke it, I'd sold it. I was involved in it deeply. Oh, but glory to God. And I'm going to tell you, when you get involved in drugs, people get killed. Families get turned upside down. Lives get destroyed. But glory to God, there I was. Now, I'm glad that man that had reconciliation on his heart. I mean written on his heart. Reconciliation. If there was hope for me, there's hope for Robert. That one you're giving up on out there, that daughter, that son, that mama, that friend, may be in and out of jail. They stole from you. They lied to you. Oh, glory to God, you remember the message. Somebody, that could be you, get me to Jesus. Amen. Hey, you know, look here. I mean, you don't feed their habit. You don't empty your pockets and say, here, I love, that's not love. Amen. But you love him the way Christ loved you. Matter of fact, why do we keep going and sharing the love of Jesus? There's a verse I'm going, I like that book, amen. Your opinion stinks, so does mine. The Bible says, for the love of Christ uh, constraineth us. For thus we judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Then they which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him that died for them and rose again. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. You get no glory. You get no pat on the back. All glory goes to one man. His name is Jesus. Hey, if you got a beautiful voice and you're singing, if it ain't for the glory of God, it's wood, hay, and stubble. Amen. All glory to go. Hey, I love you, Brother Charles. But you get no glory, amen. Hey, you get no glory. Hey, you get no glory. You get no glory. My friend, when you do what you do, you give the man Christ Jesus 100% plus glory. Hey, give him the glory. So there I was, went in there, got involved in drugs, and I'm going to tell you, people get killed. And when I was involved in drugs, myself and six other men wind up taking four guards hostage, cutting the bars out of her cell, her brush them out, and, and took four guards hostage. Right there, they should have killed me. They should have gave me the death penalty. Whoa! That one you're giving up on. You're saying, that there's no hope. That was me. That was me. Seemed like there was no hope. 
You're looking at that one out there that's going back to drugs, going back to alcohol, going back to jail, going back to the, all the wicked things of this world. Somebody get me to Jesus. Hey, man, you're that somebody. How many of you told lately that there's a man, Christ Jesus, that loves him? Don't attack their, don't, oh, you own them drugs. You ain't no good. You right. No, sir, that won't get them to Jesus. You love them because Christ first loved you. Amen. Amen. Hey, if Donnie, hey, if old Donnie would have slammed me and dumped me, he never wanted me to Jesus. But he loved me just the way I was. Hey, man, you love that sinner just the way they are. Somebody get me to Jesus. And so therefore, I wind up, we took him guards hostage, wind up cutting bars out, two other men wind up getting killed. I don't say that boldly. I deserved the death penalty. I was guilty. I was guilty of sin. I deserved it. They gave it to me. They would have been just and right. But God. <laughs> yes, he's got a plan, my friend. Yes, he's got a plan, and that's not your plan. <laughs> He has got a plan in a sinner man or woman's life. That plan is that they might come to salvation, come to the truth. He said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, but his long suffering. Ain't you glad he's long suffering? Hell, I am glory to God. I'm glad because I could have died and went to hell if God wasn't long suffering. So there I was. I got four and I wind up two more murder charges, wind up with 99 years, a 10-year sentence, two four to fives, three two to fives, a 20-year sentence. All that, and I deserved it all. There was a man come in and brush him out nowhere when I was in solitary confinement. I'd done four and a half years, seven years all together there. I deserved it. I was right where I would have been. But boy, God put his man. God put his man. <laughs> God put his man right where he ought to be. What are you doing for this man, Christ Jesus? Oh, I know you're coming to church. That's good. That's sweet. But hey, it's going on out yonder. There's men out there, men and women dying every day and going to hell. Maybe because you didn't take time out to say Jesus loves you. You'd be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his angels in heaven. Hey, you can't be Robert Gibson. I'm a nut, but I'm screwed on the right boat. Hey, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, be a nut. If you're going to be a nut, be a nut for Jesus, would you? Yes, sir, there's nothing wrong with that. So therefore, I wind up doing all that time in lockup. There was a man came in lockup. Old Brother Donnie Boy, he gets no glory. But he came in lockup, and he come by my cell, and I was shooting a shot of dope. And when he came by, he walked on by. But hear what he was doing. Lord, everybody's giving up on Robert. They say there's no hope for him. They say he only deserves death. They say there's no, nothing can happen to change his life. But Lord, you found me one day up in the back of a fruit truck, Lord, and drove me out and saved my soul. God, you can do it for Robert. He came back by my cell. You know what he done? He didn't do this. That one that you're stomping down, you're kicking down, you're saying there's no hope for, that one that you got your nose snubbed up at and saying there's no hope for, that was me, my friend. That was me. Every bit of me plus. I was a rottenness. If anybody ever deserved hell, I did. Whew. But God, his name is Jesus. Donnie come back to my cell. He didn't say, Robert, you right where you want to be. You sorry thing, you. You'll never change. You'll be no good. You know what he said? Instead of running somebody down, why don't you reach out to them? Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. I'm praying for you. When's the last time you done that? Oh, no. You think you're better. No, you ain't. It's level at Calvary, my friend. Ain't nobody better than nobody else. His name is Jesus. Amen. Somebody get me to Jesus. You know how long Donnie done that? <coughs> For eight countless years, Donnie would come by my cell. 
You know what he'd always say? Love you, boy. I'm praying for you. I give Donnie a letter one day to take out in the general population and make a hit for a gang, get somebody killed. Went out, they captured the letter, took it to the warden. And the warden come to Donnie, said, Donnie, you'll never go back in lockup again. You almost got somebody killed with that letter you brought out there. Donnie told the warden, said, hey, all I want to do is win them men to Jesus. I didn't know what was in the letter. I just took it out. I want to win them to Jesus. He said, you're not going back to lockup anymore. Hey, six months later. But look here, during that six months, you know what Donnie done? If you're giving up on somebody, I listen to me. You know what Donnie done for that six months? On his lunch break, he was a volunteer, by the way. He didn't get paid. On his lunch break, he would come to the porch of lockup. Oh, Lord, who's going to reach out to these men that everybody's giving up on? Who's going to love them, Lord, just the way they are? Who's going to bring them to you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for old Donnie. Six months later, they called Donnie back in the office. Warden said, Donnie, I've seen you over on that porch five days a week at lunchtime. You remember the lady in the Bible that was bugging the judge? He said, we're going to let you go back in over there. He comes to my door. You know what he said? I love you, boy. I've been praying for you, Robert. First of all, here's what I want you to look at your own self. Can you even pray for somebody? That one you're looking in the mirror at, can you look at that one and say, yeah, I can get a line through on the behalf of that old junkie, my mama, my daddy, my friend, my brother, my sister, my brother, it's out in the world. Yes, I can get a line through, but I'm glad for First John 1, 9, it's not a crutch. But I'm glad it's our, amen, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, I know you ain't been there. You ain't had to use that scripture since you've been saved, but I have. I wore it out. Lord, it's Robert again. Lord, it's Robert again. But Lord, keep me marching, Lord. Keep me marching in your army. And God sends me all over the country, opens doors everywhere to preach to all the nominations. God just loves sinners. You can be a Baptist and go to hell. You can be a Pentecostal. You can be a Church of Christ. You can be a Catholic. You must be born again. And I'm glad that comes from Jesus. And so Donnie, he kept loving on me. I spent four and a half years in lockup, six years, seven years all together. I deserved it all. Then I got out one day, got out of lockup. I went over there. I said, boy, I'm going to go over at that church house. I'm going to see what's going on. I got over there and I got on the back row. And guess who came back there to me? Oh, back home country. Corn bad, bad, Holy Ghost. <laughs> It wasn't, Donnie. It's the Holy Ghost of God. Came back there. He put those big old arms around me. You know what the Holy Ghost didn't say? Go back to the house. Throw your dope away. Get in a drug program. Quit all that stuff you're doing. And come and talk to me. Oh, I like that song they sang. Just as I am without one plea. You and I have no plea, my friend. We're all guilty before God. So you hear what Donnie said that night? All I know the message was about a man named Jesus. I don't know how they addressed it all, but that's who it was all about. And then that night he said this, may be someone here tonight, and you lost and undone. He said, would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you? I'm going to be honest with you, boy. I could barely move it down here. And I thought I was a grilly bear. I was all pumped up and weights and all that. could lift a lot of weights. But that night I couldn't get that arm up. You know what that's called? Pride. Who has pride? You do. I do. But everybody knows I'm a deacon. Are you born again? <laughs> everybody knows I'm a preacher. Are you born again? Amen. It don't get you to heaven. Your title won't get you to heaven. 
It's a man, Christ Jesus. It's a man, Christ Jesus. And so therefore, I got there and he said, uh, raise your hand. I couldn't raise my hand. Prideful. You know what the devil was telling me? You got dope in your house. All that stuff you've done. And that's weak to do something like that. Hey, you're Robert Gibson. You know what? I met the toughest man that I know. <laughs> His name is Jesus. He can't, he can't nobody walk up today, put a crown of thorns on my head, I'll fight back. Amen. He can't nobody spit in my face. We got it. It's going on. Hey, I'm going to God, but Jesus Christ said, I loved you and took it all and laid his life down that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly. And then there I was. Couldn't raise my hand that night, and Donnie said this. If you be here tonight, and God's got his arms wrapped around you, loving on you, showing you where you're at, and loving you anyway. He said, and you didn't raise your hand. He said, I pray you go back to your bunk tonight, and you don't sleep a wink. You flip and flop all night. On the way out the door that night, old Donnie hugged my neck. You know what he said? I love you, boy. Is there somebody you're giving up on? That one you're throwing the towel in, that was me. And plus, every bit of me. But Donnie said, I love you, boy. Despite what everybody else says, I love you, boy. And I went to my house that night. Guess who followed me back to my bunk? It was Donnie. <laughs> See, God right there, God could have said this. Robert, over at that church house, I came to you. I loved on you. I called you out. I drawed you. John 6, 44 says, No man comes to me except the Father who sent me draws him, and I'll raise him up in the last day. Hey, that tugging was on my heart that night. I took a chance. I took my chance that night. I could have went to hell, and God would have been just to allow me to go to hell. But you know what? I don't know. He's a first chance, second chance. Third, I don't know, a hundred. He's God all by himself. I don't know how many chances he gave me, but he gave me all I needed. That night, <laughs> that night, I flipped and flopped in my bunk all night long, wrestled with the Holy Ghost of God. Satan was right there wrestling with me. Why don't you ain't going to do this? Surely you ain't going to let I mean, you're Robert. Whoops, he. <laughs> what, what's the difference that make? You ain't, anyway, God loved me all night long. Next morning, I heard somebody say, who's got the keys to one walk? Guess who was there? There's old Donnie. He come in there and he walked up to my cell. He said, Robert, I'm going to be honest with you, boy. He said, I wrestled all night long. Didn't sleep. I flip and flop all night long. And God told me to come back here this morning and tell you, boy, he loves you. But you know what, Robert? The real thing is here, he wants to save you. Do you want Jesus? I said, Donnie, I didn't think the question would ever be asked again. January 5th, 1988, with 99 years, 2 4 10, 3 2 to 5 to 20, old hell deserving sinner, that old back home country going back to the Holy Ghost. God made himself. And I don't even know how I prayed. Now, these people say, pray this prayer to me. That's not in my Bible. <laughs> it might be in one of them decaffeinated ones, but it's not in this one. But anyway, the Bible said, they such a sinner's prayer in the Bible. Here's what it is. Be merciful to me, a sinner. January 5th, 1988. I marvelously, amazingly got born again, burst into the family of God. Can I tell you, if you've been there and you still is what you was, you ain't. Now, I want to give you a scripture with that, just a minute. Don't throw no rocks at me. Hey, the Bible says, examine yourself. Churches today is full of sinners. That's going forward. They come down. They pray crocodile tears, and they mean well. They're hurting. Something in their life is irritating them and bothering them. There's darkness in it, and they'll come down, and they'll pray the sinner's prayer, whatever that is. And that's to be merciful me, a sinner, and get right back up the same old way. Listen, when you come to Jesus, you come one way, as a sinner. 
And then from there, my friend, you got a direct line. But that day I got born again. My night life wasn't ever the same. I'm going to cut her short right in here. Listen, right there, when you get born again, your life, you'll keep doing what you want to do, but your want to do's will change. <laughs> if your want to do's ain't changed, you still is what you was. Amen. And so examine yourself and see where you're at. Uh, but that day, and then you said, well, what are you doing out here, Robert Gibson? I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. His name is Jesus. And he gets all glory, honor, and praise. 22 years later, after I got born again, guess who came by again? His name is Jesus. He said, Robert, I got a plan for you. And it's not in here. It's out there. But it wasn't that, that but you know, just, you, I don't know about you, but I talked to the Lord. That's all right, go to God. Ain't nothing wrong with being in that. That's all right, but then look, he said, I got a plan for you. And everybody else was scratching him. What do you mean he's getting out? He's doing what? You know why? For the glory of God. Why are you doing what you're doing in your Christian life? If it ain't for the glory of God, you check yourself and see why you're doing what you're doing. Let's all stand, Brother Charles. Lord, once again, I've given, Lord, what you would have me to give. No doubt, Lord, there's souls hanging in the boundary of hell. God, do tonight what you and you only can do, and we'll be careful to give you glory, honor, and praise. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.